Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with barbecue shrimp. That's right, I'm doing my take on this indigenous American shellfish dish. And while usually I'm the one giving things the wrong name, this time it was the lovely and talented people of New Orleans who decided to call this barbecue shrimp, even though it really has nothing to do with barbecue. But what it does have something to do with is being incredibly delicious. So here is what we're going to do. We need about a pound and a half of what they call colossal shrimp, which is kind of funny because as some of you found out, calling something that's only four inches long colossal usually doesn't work out. But anyway, that's the official name for these because they come 15 to a pound. And I'm also using ones that are called Easy Peel, which means they've been split down the back, which makes removing the exoskeleton very simple. So the only place it's really attached is down by the tail. So I just take my fingernails and peel that little piece off. I try to get all that tail meat out intact. And then once you've peeled that part of the shell, the rest will come right off. And not only are these Easy Peel shrimp easier to peel, they're also deveined. So very easy to work with. So bottom line, you're going to peel and devein your shrimp. You're going to separate the shells into a saucepan and reserve those. And of course the shrimp you can throw right in a mixing bowl. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shrimp and drizzle over about a tablespoon and a half or so of some kind of vegetable oil, something neutral. And then we're gonna season this up and the first thing we're gonna add here is a ton of freshly and coarsely ground black pepper. I'm also gonna put in a little bit of paprika. I'm using smoked paprika. A little shake of cayenne. And then last but not least, a little bit of Old Bay. Please do not substitute with the Young Bay. And then we're gonna mix that up and when it's tossed and combined thoroughly, I'm gonna throw a piece of plastic over that and we're gonna let that sit in the fridge for at least an hour. We want that shrimp to start absorbing those flavors. So you can leave it in the fridge for at least an hour. A couple hours is fine. I guess overnight would be okay, although I've never tried that. And while that's chilling, we're gonna go back over to the stove and make a shrimp stock, which is so simple. So I had you put all your shrimp shells in a saucepan and we're gonna place that over medium high heat with a little chunk of butter. And we're just gonna saute that for a minute or two until the shells turn pink. And even more so than color, you can go by smell here. When that smells like awesome sauteed shrimp, it's done. So cook it for a minute or two until it turns pink and smells awesome. And then we're gonna dump in about two cups of liquid. I'm using chicken stock, you can use water, but I do like the chicken stock if I have it. And then all we're gonna do is wait for that to come up to a simmer, turn it down to low, and just let it simmer on the back of the stove for about 20 minutes, okay? And a little bit will evaporate, but that's fine. And in about 20 minutes or a half hour, you should have a very beautiful and fully flavored shrimp stock. At that point, just go ahead and strain that into a bowl. And after that's been strained, we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the wet ingredients, which is the juice of a lemon, freshly squeezed, of course. Come on. We're also gonna need some Worcestershire sauce, and then a few shakes of hot sauce. Anything from Louisiana will work. And then we're gonna mix that up, and that's it. And at this point, I believe all our components are ready. So here's what I'm thinking. We're gonna take the shrimp, and we're gonna sear those in a really, really hot pan. At that point, we're gonna add a bunch of butter, some freshly chopped rosemary, and a ton of minced garlic. We'll cook that a little bit, and then we'll finish it with our shrimp stock mixture. Okay, so if everyone's good with that, let's go over to the stove where we've placed our largest frying pan on high, high heat, and we need to preheat that like super, super hot. This literally can't be too hot. And when you're sure it's been preheated, we're gonna go ahead and place in the shrimp. No oil in it, dry pan. Remember, the shrimp's coated in oil. We don't need any oil in this. And we're just gonna give this first side one minute of searing. And if your pan was hot enough, one minute is all it should take to get a really beautiful sear on that first side. All right, you can see here. We're gonna go ahead and turn those over. Again, the heat's on the highest it will go. Oh, and by the way, this is why you wanna use large shrimp so you can get a really beautiful sear on them before they overcook. All right, so we're gonna flip all those over. And as soon as those get turned, we're gonna quickly throw in our butter, which you can see I've cut into small chunks. So toss in the butter, Toss in the garlic, toss in the rosemary, and we're just gonna cook this for one minute. So take your tongs, give it a stir. We do not wanna brown the garlic. All right, slightly golden's fine, brown is not. So one minute should be fine. The brownness you see at the bottom of the pan is not the garlic. That's the caramelization from the shrimp. So relax, that was fine. And after a one minute stir and sizzle, we're gonna quickly pour in our shrimp stock, which of course is gonna deglaze the pan. And this recipe is pretty much done. Now what you can do is just let this boil and reduce for a few minutes and serve it. But what I like to do is remove the shrimp and reserve them and reduce the sauce without the shrimp in it. Because the fear is overcooking the shrimp while you finish the sauce. And by removing it, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna scoop those out onto a plate or in a bowl. And then I'm simply gonna boil the sauce until it slightly thickens. Of course, the more you reduce it, the more intense the flavor gets. All right, the spicier and saltier it's gonna be. 
Speaking of salt, be careful seasoning. The Worcestershire sauce is salty. In fact, you may want to put it in the Worcestershire at the end so you can kind of taste for the salt. But bottom line, you're just trying to reduce the sauce till it thickens slightly. And then once that's happened and you've tasted for seasoning, reduce the heat to low. Go ahead and dump your shrimp back in. Give them a stir till they're warm through, which is just going to take a minute. And then spoon that up on some rice. And you are in store for one of the great, great American shellfish recipes of all time. I mean, look at that. Barbecue shrimp. And because we used it in the sauce, it's completely legal to garnish with a rosemary sprig. Just a gorgeous looking and tasting dish. And again, this is my version. I believe the authentic version has approximately 14 times more butter. But still, this was incredibly delicious. And all those big flavors just work so well together. The garlic, the rosemary, the black pepper, the spice. Just a beautiful combination. And even the plain rice with that sauce on it is incredible. And of course, usually I say serve this on whatever you want. In this case, no. No, you're not the boss of your barbecue shrimp bases. You will serve this over white rice and like it. So to wrap things up here, I'd say the two secrets. Try to get the largest shrimp you can get and take the couple extra minutes to make that shrimp stock. But anyway, if you're a fan of shrimp or just incredibly delicious things in general, I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.